Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, so today I'll be giving a uh, brief presentation on the implementation of a standard interface for SMS and Zephyr. Uh, before we get to that, though, let me give myself give a brief introduction of myself. Uh, so uh, hi, my name is Jared Bauman. Uh, I work for T-Mobile in the U.S. Um, I particularly um, I've worked on the uh, DevEdge IoT project, particularly our hardware platform which runs on the Zephyr RTOS. And because of this, we have uh, found many ways in which we can improve Zephyr, particularly for both for our use cases and for everyone else's. Um, one of these is, of course, SM, um, adding SMS support to Zephyr. So to start, well, let me just get into a little bit of background. Uh, what value does SMS provide? Um, so of course, SMS is a standardized communication protocol that exists um, and is supported by the majority of cellular networks. And it's useful for a couple things, particularly notifications. Now, generally when we think SMS, we think, oh, like a restaurant texts you when your table is ready, but those notifications could be for anything and can be useful in an IoT situation as well. Of course, it lets you do transfer small segments of data and in, particular modem configurations with specific networks, it's even possible to do uh, wake up for low power uh, applications. But again, that, that's kind of dependent on network and modem. But let's go on to what already exists. So currently, of course, there is no standard interface in Zephyr RTOS for SMS. Um, while some modems, particularly the uh, SIM 7080G, does have uh, code for handling SMS, it is the only modem that does currently. There isn't any exists, anything really existing uh, for anything else. Uh, of course, the SIMS 780G implementation though is even kind of limited, particularly that it only supports receive. It can only be polled for whether a message is available. And it's a very basic custom interface. So, Let's just talk, why does this matter? Why does standardizing the SMS interface matter? Again, currently only one modem supports SMS and it's via custom interface. And while it is useful and can be utilized for a lot of purposes, it's not really generalized. Again, there's no, it is receive only. There's no ability to send messages. There's also just no ability to actually tell when a message comes in. You have to mainly poll and check. Um, and even when you get that SMS message, it only provides minimal information about the me message. Particularly, it only provides the message body, which is the text of the message, as well as the timestamp. Um, and by having custom interfaces for um, SMS on each modem, uh, each modem would generally probably have a different approach to how it's done. And without a standard interface, generalized testing is completely impossible. So let, let's talk, oh, okay, jumped a few slides there. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the design. So first, when we were uh, designing this uh, um, interface, we set up some really basic uh, functional requirements. Uh, first and foremost, again, it must be able to support both send and receive of SMS. Um, particularly, we wanted to be able to send standard uh, SMS uh, using the SMS alphabet GSM 0338. We also want to support UCS2, but we, we thought that'd be more as an optional, um, more optional. Um, at minimum, we want to also be able to block waiting for SMS receives. Uh, preferably though, we wanted notifications to be possible so we know when a message is received without having to wait. And finally, we want to provide pretty much all the available information from an SMS message, not just the timestamp, we also want to say, the original address or phone number it came from, data header information, and of course timestamp as well. Uh, so here's our what we kind of propose a solution. We we just designed a very basic interface with uh, five user code functions, four driver side functions. From the user's perspective, it, there is a function for send, receive, and setting up callbacks, enabling, disabling, registering, unregistering as well as four driver side functions that need to be implemented in tandem so that the modem supports it. And particularly those are just the driver code for sending an SMS, receiving an SMS, notifying 
the callbacks of a receipt of a message, as well as a toggle for whether or not these notifications would be sent out or not. So let, let's start with some of the user code um, synchronous functions, of course, send and receive the really basic things. Uh, send is about um, it's kind of like how you send an SMS normally. You provide a target number as well as your message, and you just say which modem you'd like to send the message out on. Um, receive, also re relatively basic. It takes, a point, it takes a pointer to somewhere to write the message that it receives out to, as well as the timeout requested. And basically, you, is a walking call, waits till either the timeout comes or that you have received a message, at which point it will write it to the buffer and will return to zero status, indicating the successful receipt. If it times out, of course, you just get your nice negative E timed out, all the good stuff. Of course, then there's also the callbacks, which um, if enabled, callbacks will be triggered asynchronously when the modem receives an SMS message. And as soon as you have an, the message received, it will let your application know and you can do what you want with that. Um, and the driver should will provide useful information for each of the received SMS messages, including the body of the message, of course, the uh, originator address, timestamp, the concatenation info, as well as just telling you which modem received the message. So for callbacks, we have a number of management functions. Again, uh, there is, of course, callback enable, which is used to enable and disable the message, or eh, message callback. Uh, um, a register function to register your callback for later use, as well as an unregister to remove that callback if desired. Now, the other part, of course, is the driver perspective. We want to make it very simple for this to implement the existing um, Zephyr drivers for modems. So, for the drivers, all is needed, of course, is a send function, a receive function, a notification toggle, which yeah, simply just enables and disables the uh, callback mode, and as well as a uh, code to call notify when a message is received. So, of course, yeah, send, receive, and notify enable are relatively self-explanatory. They're basically just the driver side counterparts to the user code. The only fundamental difference, of course, is that they don't provide a device pointer since this is going to be linked to the device, so it's kind of implied. And and they're relatively basic, exactly what you'd expect there. Um, the other function important to the driver side, though, is the notify function. This is a function provided by the uh, subsystem slash modem interface we're providing. All it does is uh, relays um, the um, received SMS information to the callbacks. It simply just call this function with received SMS and all this information, and the subsystem will automatically handle relaying that to the application. So let's talk a little bit about some other considerations of future work for this. Of course, RPR really just sets out to be the basic framework to be expanded upon. We, we really just want to get something out there to start with. I mean, certain details will need to be considered for a final version. Right now, again, alternative encoding is one big one. Uh, currently, our implementation, we do, or at least on our modem, which is the one SE, which is still in the process of getting upstream. We do support UCS2, and we just convert that to UTF-8. But the validity of this is a little questionable as well, just the fact that variable length encodings make properly sizing buffers a little difficult. And it, there's a debate on whether that is the best solution. Um, so again, we're just trying to still determine what the most proper solution is. But even excluding UCS2, GSM, 0338 um, characters, some of them also do fall outside of ASCII, or, so that adds some more complexity here. Um, of course, there's also dealing handling of other headers. Currently, we really only handle concatenation since in our um, usage, that was the most important header to consider since, again, it's very often you'll send an SMS that's more than the 160 bytes of a single segment, so if you want to deal with longer SMS, you have to consider that header. But there are also other headers that are part of SMS. We don't have any code to support that yet. However, we probably want to consider that. We may want to consider that in the future. Um, but yeah, for more details, of course, you can see our full proposed solution in RPR. Um, it exists now. I think it's currently still a draft, but 
it's all ready for review and uh, can comment and can be worked on. So let's get to the questions part. Um, any questions? So as of, so I'm gonna check virtual. In the room, there are currently no questions. And we don't have um, any virtual, but please, um, if you could tell someone, if someone is just starting out and looking for some more information and is new, where would you recommend that they go or where could they find more, um, you know, more details, materials, tools, that kind of thing? So I'm trying to figure, well, kind of depends on what you're asking. Um, for understanding the SMS, well, Believe me, I'd love to tell you some uh, nice, easy to understand resources, but I'll be honest, in my, my research, it's a lot of very dense technical documentation that's really just not fun to deal with. But um, as but if you're asking more from the um, perspective of implementing this in Zephyr, we have actual some documentation on this and uh, uh, trying to uh, collect my thoughts a little here um but yeah we, we again we also have the pr that has all the information currently for this code but um yeah it really just kind of depends on what you're asking there i'm i do see that there is something in the q a um yeah and i was just actually going to say that they are asking could you di display the link to the pr again oh no problem uh Um, any further questions? I, I feel a little like I should have made this a little longer, considering I was expecting a few more questions here. <laughs> so as of right now, there are no um, other questions, but if someone did want to reach you or contact you after this, how can they do that? Oh, I probably should have put contact information on this. Um, well, of course, they can always reach out to me um, at the... Um, at my work email, of course, that is in the PR. I also do have a personal email, which I think I may have put in the PR, but I may not have. But you can always reach out to me via email. I also do, uh, I am also in the Zephyr Discord, of course. So um, I don't have, I can not tell you the user handle off the top of my head, but uh, if you reach out in the modem channel, um, I should be able to respond to that and answer any questions that they may have. Okay, and some, and we just had another thing come in virtual too, um, which says, "What modem have you ported this to?" Uh, currently, we have ported this to the um, Murata One SE modem, which unfortunately is still in the review process for his effort. Considering that was the modem on our Dev Edge hardware kit, but that's just where we had it implemented first. We do have a, I, or at least I'm currently working on a version of the Sim 7080G driver that has this interface also implemented. However, unfortunately, that was not ready before this presentation. So uh, again, just, it's not there yet, but I'll, I'm hoping to get that in in the next week or two, depending on if time permits. That could be next year. You can do a follow-up session. <laughs> Good do, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, I don't see anything out. Oh, hold on. Is there a limit on the length of sent or received SMS messages? Currently, the, that is controlled by a config option. We have a config. I would have to. I'm not going to memorize. Remember this off the top of my head. But in the PR, we do have um, take config options for setting the maximum send size as well as the maximum receive size. Again, there is a practical limit, but the uh, full limit of concatenating SMS, you can have up to, I believe, 255 segments. So that can get quite large. So we instead, we just went for a configuration option. Whatever someone particular application needs, they can just set in the config. So if they need to send, I don't know, a thousand characters, they can set that as their um, output size and a driver can handle that, presumably. Thank you, and I thank John for those questions. Anything else? Okay. 
I don't have a lot here, but um, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Nothing else is coming in yet, but I do just want to remind um, anyone who is watching or watches this after that they can reach you via the platform as well via direct message that will alert Jared immediately that someone has sent a question or a note as well as um, watching the session and again and putting questions right in there. So there are a couple of ways to um, get to him and also check out the PR in this and Jared, I thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you as well. Uh, I was glad to present. Um, and just thanks again for having me. Thank you. Have a great day, and we will hopefully talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.